I take it we just get to refer to the fact that we acknowledge we've read that rather than actually having to read it or summarize it or anything? You, uh, you need to, one of the actions you need to take is you need to waive uh, the reading. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, I think, your third item on the, the list, courtesy of Marcia. Oh, she didn't send me any slides that said anything like that. Oh, it's on the slides. Is it on the slides? Oh, on, on the new slides, but not on the stuff you sent me. Uh, I, uh, on the slides I sent you yesterday, you'll see it is on the staff recommendation. Okay, hold on, I gotta figure out how to make my computer have a smaller view. Hello, you hear me? Yep. Okay, good. It is also listed on the agenda. I'm not going to do video. I can't. Oh. oh. So I guess it's now four o'clock. So I should be having my act together here. Is. And I don't see Director Donner. Well, we have to have four. Is he? Did somebody say four. the other day he was going to? Somebody was going to be gone. We were only going to have four fifths. Uh, that was actually uh, Director Danziger, but he's here. I'm here. I'm here. Well, since we have four fifths, and that's and can we should we just go ahead and start? And I gotta have my yes, uh, please. Okay, here we go. So, uh, welcome to the Moraga Runa Fire District Special Board Meeting, January twenty second, twenty twenty one. Uh, I'll call the meeting to order, and Marcia, can we have a roll call vote, please? Or vote roll call, please. Director Bates. Here. Director Danziger. Here. Director Donner. Director Jex. Here. President Jorgens. Here. Okay, so we have a quorum and a four fifths quorum, as a matter of fact. So I guess we can continue. So item two is uh, I'm going to open public comment for items that are not on today's agenda. And we have not received any written public comment and we do not have any hands raised. Okay, so I will close the public comment uh, and move on to uh, items that are on the agenda with special agenda item 3.1, which is the modification of urgency ordinance 20-04 requiring electric utilities to provide notice of work in high fire risk areas and restricting certain electrical utility work during red flag morning periods. Uh, the staff has a recommendation. Um, we discuss, deliberate, and waive the reading uh, of the um, of the whole notice, the 20.04. So I guess we need a motion to waive the reading. I so move. I'll second. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded. Um, and let's have a roll call vote on that. Director Bates. Aye. Director Dancer. Aye. Director Donner is absent. Director Jex. Aye. President Jorgens. Aye. Okay. And can, can I just hear, I did not catch who, who did the second motion. Uh, I'm a, I made the motion. That was the I, first Oh, the second. I think I second Danziger. Thank you. Okay, um, so the next thing we would do is, do we do I have a, do, do we need to discuss it at all? Does it, sorry, does the board have any discussion they'd like to have? I think the uh, I think you, the staff should present should present the item. Okay. Good afternoon, directors. Um, in October 2020, MOFD adopted Ordinance 20-04, requiring electrical utilities to notify the district when deploying 
SIPT teams within MOFD's jurisdiction and banning high-risk non-emergency electrical work in high fire areas during red flag weather conditions. On December 18, 2020, PG&E filed a reverse validation petition seeking declaratory or injunctive relief from this ordinance in Superior Court in Contra Costa County. These documents were provided to the district on December 23, 2020. District Council and staff engaged in a series of meetings with PG&E in order to determine if modifications were acceptable to both parties, which preserved the spirit of Ordinance 20-04 while minimizing the compliance burden. Staffs believe, staff believes the changes outlined below accomplish this goal while avoiding litigation. Uh, the proposed changes uh, recognize the dynamic nature of SIPT team deployments. Staff recommends changing the current requirement notification of 48 hours in advance to no later than 09 on the day of the deployment. At PG&E's request, the definition of SIPT team was further clarified to ensure the ordinance does not apply to normal utility crews, some of whom have, may have training or prior experience as firefighters. The proposed change also clarifies that the district must be notified when such teams are deployed on type six fire apparatus. And I would just say for the, the board's uh, awareness, uh, with council support, we were involved in an extensive back and forth with PG&E that allowed us to gain a better understanding uh, of how they deploy their SIPT teams, um, the, the dispatching system and, and the deliberation process they use to determine where those teams should be located. And the fact that those teams are used for a number of other tasks, which fall outside our area of concern, which is really focused on high hazard electrical work in the high fire areas of the district. Uh, we believe that the proposed changes uh, meet all of um, our requirements and in our core requirements in this case are specific to those things that could cause uh, a delay in the application of firefighting resources due to confusion, uncertainty about who is in the operational area and the challenges uh, of coming across something unexpected. In this case, the something unexpected uh, taking the form of a PG&E SIPT team uh, that we would not expect to find within our jurisdiction when responding to a fire. Uh, we're confident that the proposed changes preserve all of the elements that the district was concerned about um, while meeting PG&E's valid concerns uh, with regard to how they operate and the compliance burden uh, that some of the original components would have uh, it, it applied to them or would have created without generating uh, any requisite benefit to the district. So we're confident that, that this uh, meets our needs. Uh, we also believe uh, that it sets the stage for a future adoption, which will be beneficial for both uh, the district, for PG&E and for surrounding entities as we move towards uh, what we hope will be a, a more standardized approach. Uh, with that, uh, I would like to, to hand it over to district council uh, who can provide uh, some amplifying remarks regarding the, the legal side uh, of this, uh, of the change and, uh, and PG&E's uh, intent uh, with regard to their reverse validation petition. Uh, good afternoon. So um, we, uh, as she said, uh, we've engaged in a uh, significant back and forth with uh, PG&E's council uh, and uh, uh, come uh, to terms on uh, uh, provisions of the, of the revised ordinance that is acceptable uh, to the chief, obviously uh, being the expert uh, in what we need, uh, we defer to the chief on, on the substance of it, although I would say that in general, um, the, the, the goals of the, uh, of the ordinance have been preserved. We have received from PG&E uh, 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 an agreement that is si signed by them, not yet signed by uh, me, uh, that agrees that in exchange for making uh, the, the changes uh, that we're making, uh, they will withdraw their petition for declaratory relief with prejudice, uh, meaning that it cannot be brought again uh, challenging uh, this particular ordinance, I would say uh, the caveat, which is written into the agreement, but would be true even if it wasn't, is that if at some point we change this ordinance, uh, then PG&E reserves its right, of course, to challenge any changes uh, that are made. Okay. So I'll, is that the end of the present? So Chief, do you recommend that we, both of you, do you recommend that we sign this? Uh, yes, sir. From an operational standpoint, I, I recommend uh, adoption as I believe this preserves the spirit, intent, and the functional elements of the original ordinance as it pertains to firefighting operations. And I defer to counsel with his regard to recommendations regarding the legal side. Yeah, on the legal side, I, I think, you know, I, I would say the agreement that we're talking about is a very, very simple agreement. 
uh, consistent with the fact that this has been worked out uh, quickly and without the expenditure of uh, very much in the way of legal funds by the district. Uh, so it's a very simple uh, agreement and I do recommend it. Okay, so I will open the uh, floor for public comment on this uh, item 3.1. Thank, yeah, I just wanted to take a moment to just announce that Director Donner has arrived um, at 4.06. Great. We have not well, received any written public comment and we do not have any hands raised. Okay, I will close the public comment period then uh, and open the floor to any board members who have any questions or comment. Um, this Director Danziger, I don't have any Real questions, um, but I have my comment is I just would like to commend uh, Chief Winnaker and uh, District Council Holtzman on uh, on their due dil diligence and uh, avoiding litigation with PG&E, and I believe that this ordinance um, will um, provide a, a, another level of, uh, of of safety and will be beneficial to the community and to our uh, firefighters here. So. Uh, You'd be, to be commended. Thank you. I, I agree with that. Any other comments? Okay, I, we will close the board comments. Do we have a motion to uh, adopt the, the I, ordinance 20-40 as modified? I move we adopt ordinance 20 far as modified. I'll second. That was Donner. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, can we have a roll call vote on that? Director Bates. Aye. Director Danziger. Aye. Director Donner. Yes. Director Jex. Yes. President Jorgens. Yes. Okay, that's uh, passed unanimously. Um, and I think that's the end of our agenda. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? A motion to adjourn. Director Danziger. All second. second. Okay, we have a motion on the floor to kind of get a roll call vote. Director Bates? Aye. Director Danziger? Aye. Director Donner? Yes. Director Jex? Yes. President Jorgens? Yes. Okay, 11 minutes. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Have a great weekend. Okay, bye.